All right, shall I get started? My name is Robin Harper. I work at the Hill Library and Preservation Department at NC State. And you are watching me live from Celestine Studio in Hall River, North Carolina. I'm gonna be making a couple of pop-ups. Um, this is my first Twitch, so if I uh, mess up or if you have any questions or anything, I hope you will put it in the chat. All right, uh, I'm gonna start with uh, what I call a face pop-up. And you may have seen this on the website when you signed up, a little elephant. There you go, an elephant. We're gonna be making one of those. And here's another face pop up. Here's a more simple form, just the basic face. You can see most of them look like frogs to start with, but you can obviously adapt them to be whatever you want. Um, yeah, my elephant, I love that little elephant. He was very fun. Oh, <laughs> thank you. All right, so let's make a face. Start with a piece of paper, amazingly enough. Fold it in half. I'm folding it this way just so I can have the biggest face possible, but you can uh, obviously fold it any way you want. Um, with pop-ups, you can um, be as slack as you want, or you could be as detailed and fancy as you want. And today I'm going to give you the sort of slack, quick, here's how you do it version, and you can decide how fussy you want to get with it, okay? So first of all, you are going to just cut the mouth opening. And this can be pretty much any kind of cut you want to make. Um, if you look at that, you, that's going to determine sort of the width of the mouth. Gosh, I can't get this camera quite right. Okay. Then you might want to make a mark about where you want the, the top of the head to be. I'm going to say, I'm going to make it give him a nice big head. I'll say right here. And then here's where I want the chin to be. All right. Take your ruler and you're going to score those fold, those, uh, those lines from the end of your cut to the mark you made. <laughs> Starts with paper. All right, there's one, and now we're gonna do the top of the head, top of the face, top of the marnin. All right. Okay, so there's my basic face. So I'm gonna fold this over And fold this one over. Okay, and now open them back up again, turn it over, fold them this way. So you're really just trying to show the paper that you really mean it. This is really where you want it to be. You're not kidding around. Okay, close it back up again. And now you open it the way you would open the card, right? And there's your face. And now you just have to pop that out. Hence the name pop-up. Pop that out like that and pop this one out. So you're asking them to fold differently than the rest of the card. So once you get those moving in the right direction, then you're gonna go ahead and close the card the proper way, the way you would close it. I'll do that again, that may have been a little hard to see. And now you're gonna bone it again, like so. And there's your basic face. So let me do that again. So you've got the card folded this way, you open it up this way, you pop that out along that crease you made on the other side, remember, where you were telling it that you really meant it, top and bottom, and then you just close the card. All right, so there's the basic face. Now, I'm gonna give him some eyes, and basically the eyes are exactly the same as the face, but we're gonna use this crease right here and this crease right here um, as the center points of the eyes. So these creases will be these creases, but for the eyes. It does look like a beak. They all end up looking like some kind of a 
frog or whatever kind of thing. I made one earlier that totally could be an emu. Oh yeah, here's my emu. Wait, could that not be an emu beak? I totally see an emu there, emu. Or a, uh, what's the other one, ostrich. Okay, so let's make some eyes for this guy. So I'm gonna go ahead and try to cut both eyes at the same time so they'll be in the same place and sort of look semi the same. Of course, they don't have to be the same. I'm gonna make an asymmetrical creature. That's totally your call. Here's gonna be the top of my eyelid. Here's the bottom of my eyelid. I'm gonna score this. The overlap shape on that was great. I don't know what that means. Okay, thank you. Glad it was great. Um, scoring this. Okay. Oh, the emu's mouth. Thank you. Yeah, I was pretty happy with that. I thought it was cute. Okay. Score that. Score that. Are you able to see how they're the same? It's basically the same technique. I'm just using a different fold. Instead of the whole card fold, I'm using just the eye, the eye fold there. Hope that was clear as mud. Let's see now, where was that gonna be? I'm gonna mark on the other side so the eyes will be pretty much the same. Oops, sorry, I keep getting out of my camera range. And score. Okay, good. Glad it makes sense. Um, all right. Now, force these guys open. And these guys open. Okay. So now, here's the back again, just like last time. Now we've got the eyes. So we have to turn it over and just pop those eyes out. Just pop those eyes out. Lovely image. And this is obviously a little trickier because when you open them up, when you open it up, you don't want to, you know, you still just want to crease along there. You don't, it's easy to get all this involved too, but you don't want that. You just want to crease along this one uh, area. And this eye. If I get carried away and, um, Get out of camera range, please tell me. Okay, I think that's got that. And the eyes seem to be pretty much the same. Incidentally, I, I should have said this was um, this elephant. Uh, Emily Schmidt and I did this elephant with the, uh, I guess, junior high school over on Centennial Campus. And they were doing jungle animals, I think. And uh, we thought it was a great, or I thought it was a great. Emily went along with it. Uh, great idea to use elephant dung paper, which is what this is, made of elephant dung, believe it or not. It's clean, yes, it's clean, but the elephant has already processed it for us one time. You can see some of the things he had to eat that day. Um, but he's done the major processing for us, so then we just make it into paper. So that's a pretty awesome uh, thing to do. Jamie, it's not you, it's cool. All right, so here's my finished creature. Kind of looks like uh, Kermit the Frog a little bit. Rawr. Now, um, we did not harvest the dung ourselves, thank goodness. No, somebody else at a much lower pay scale did that for us. <clears throat> sorry, sorry. Um, okay, so now uh, hopefully you can see that you start there, but then you take your then you just start adding stuff, right? You can add ears, you can add tusks, you can add a trunk, you can add whatever the heck you want to add to it. Um, I don't think I have any others finished here. I don't. So just try to think about all the things you could do, right? You could glue paper onto there, give him some eyeshadow. You could make some horns. You could give him some lipstick. You could give him a beard. You know, whatever, whatever it's going to be. You can go crazy. He is a bit sinister. I kind of like him for that reason. 
Gets good shadows though. All right, so that's your face pop up. Now the next one <clears throat> is related to the face pop up. It's actually, I call it a half face because you only do, if you can see on the back of the card here, you only do one, uh, one folded area instead of two. There's, this is like three mouths if you'll think of it that way. You're an elephant dung collector? Oh, well, thank you, sir. We, we thank you for your service. Uh, so this is a fish. If you can't tell, it's supposed to look like uh, more than one fish. I don't know, this is weak. But anyway, there's my little fish flags. So you basically just make mouths and then you put attach your flags to them. There's another one. Which way do I go? I don't know which way to go. All right, so now, uh, how was I gonna do that? Let's see. So I'm gonna start again with a piece of paper, uh, fold it in half. And, and again, you know, if you want something like this one, I did pretty exacting, maybe you can't tell it, but like I measured on the back, the space these were apart and I wanted the curve to be exactly the same on each one. You know, you could certainly do that. Um, or you can just say, I'm gonna just freewheel it. So you make your cut. I guess these are gonna be roughly the same. You make your mark where you want the bottom of the mouth or whatever to go. Score that. I'm trying to work in a joke about scoring, but nothing is coming to mind that's very uh, appropriate. You can score with your pop-ups. All right. So now you fold those over. March, Ma yeah, March Madness tie-in. There's gotta be a way to do that. I don't know. These could be, hey, these could be, um, these could be basketball hoops. You could totally do that. Uh, oh. So doing the same thing as I did before, open that up, pop those out. Oops. That space in the middle is always tricky. That little space right there never wants to be consistent. Okay, there we go. And this one. Yeah, you've got that little tiny space right there that you have to convince him to stay with the program. He wants to uh, do what everybody else is doing, but. He's got to stay true to his original shape. So there, see that's those little folds right there are hard to uh, manage. Okay, so now I'm gonna do this. Bone everything down. All right. So yeah, there's gotta be a way those could be basketball hoops, right? Maybe, I don't know, something. All right, now I'm gonna make some flags. You, um, you do have to think about the flag uh, where it's going to land. So like when your card closes, when your card closes, you don't want the parts sticking out, right? You don't want the flags popping out of the sides. So, you know, you can't just glue them on there just because they fit this way doesn't mean they're going to stay in place when you close the card, obviously. So like, see, watch this guy. When you close it, he's moving. So you don't want him sticking out over here. So that's one thing you do kind of have to keep in mind. One way I like to do that is to... Um, so if this is gonna be my flag material, I'm gonna set it right where I'm gonna glue the flag, right there on that one crease. And I'm gonna fold the paper. And now I'm just gonna make some marks here to tell myself that I can't go outside that line. All right, so when I'm cutting my flag out of this, I know where my boundaries are. Um, let's see, how about, let's make a rain cloud.
Okay, I'm trying to read the... <laughs> okay, I can't think and work at the same time, so I can't read the comments. Uh, okay, now let's hope I didn't go overboard with that cut. <clears throat> I might have gone too far. So, right. So I'm thinking I'm going to put him right there. If I close this up, is he going to stay inside? Yes, just barely. All right. Now, when I'm making these... Um, for real, like I mean for it to be the finished product, I usually use Elmer's glue or PVA, same thing. Um, but when I'm just trying to figure out a pop-up, you know, I'm trying to decide what it's going to be like, how I'm going to create it, I use glue stick because it's just fast and easy. Um, so I'm gluing this right on that fold. Okay, can you see how that's right on that fold? How do I do this? There. Can you see where it is? So it's stuck on there, and when I close the card, it doesn't stick out. Magical! All right. It's kind of a strangely shaped uh, rain cloud, but oh well. Now this one, I may just wing it on this one and not be too picky about it. How about, um, how about I make... Gosh, can I make a bird? Can I just like freewheel a bird? I bet I can't do it. I was, <laughs> that is how I drift off camera when I'm not sure what I'm doing. He has a long beak. A bird, sort of. Ooh, what kind of tail does that bird have? I don't know what that's supposed to be. Okay. Hmm. It's more of a standing up bird. Let's get rid of this weird leg. Give him a little bit more of a wing. Okay. There's my lame attempt at a bird. So I'm going to glue him. Let's see. I glue him right there. Will he stay put when I close my card? Will he stay go where he's supposed to go? And the answer is yes if I make the beak just a tiny bit shorter. So he would go right there. Is that right? He's like that. And then he's going to open up like that. Yeah. So let's make his beak just a little bit shorter. And what was I going to do again like this? I think that's what I was doing. This is not going to be perfect, okay? Just, just go ahead and know that. Let's hope I did that right. Hummingbird. Bluebird. Now, will it close? Yes, it closes. And then you open it, and you've got a bird, a weird-looking bird flying over a rain cloud. All right, one more. One more something up here. And I kind of want it to go off that way. Maybe it can be, uh, I can make it be sort of a rainbow. Uh... Look how I keep going off camera when I don't know what I'm doing. I think that's really funny. As soon as I feel insecure about what I'm doing, I go off camera. Completely subconsciously. All right. So obviously this is just a blue rainbow. But you'd want to, you know, you could do more than one color, clearly. Um, just make that a little narrower there. I need a pot at the end of the rainbow. Now let's test and see if this will stay in bound. Looks like it might. Looks like it's pretty close. So I'm going to try. I can always trim off a little bit afterward. Glue stick. Cheeks out. Going off cam when you don't want to be seen. Yep. That's exactly, checks out. Yeah, that's exactly what I'm doing. Okay. Okay, just imagine that's a rainbow, okay? This is just 
proof of concept. Okay, it barely fits in there, but it does fit in there. So, you know, there you go. There's your little flaggy uh, bird flying in the air scene. Woohoo! So, you know, this, this is just a quick and dirty, uh, not perfect version. Um, if you can imagine doing something with a little more skill or a little more planning, could be could be pretty cool. Um, now, anybody, well, I guess if you have questions at any point, you'll put them in the chat. I can't really ask you if you have questions. All right, so that's that one. Now, uh, I only have uh, one more. I don't want to finish too soon, but this one is sort of like um, a little cage. So you open it up and it's, it's a little cage effect. Whoops. Like that. Here's a bigger one. I don't know what to say you would do with that. Maybe you'd have a little lion back there or something, or a giraffe could poke his head out. Um, how did I get into paper craft? Um, yeah, you can always ask more questions about the elephant dung paper. I could talk about that for a ridiculously long time. Um, uh, my, my degree is in painting and drawing, and so I got into paper and painting, and then, uh, then you just sort of leads into doing all kinds of things with paper. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't really know how I got here. Maybe some people who wander are lost. All right. So now I'm going to make a, the little cage thingy. And so you fold your paper. Uh, I'm going to use this to make a circle because I kind of care about this being exact. Um, you could freehand it. It just depends on what you're going for, right? How careful you want it to be. I tried a few that weren't circles and they were kind of awkward. So um, you could probably do a square. Um, but I tried doing just sort of a freestyle shape, you know, like a fried egg kind of shape, just and it, it didn't work. So for now, um, for now we're doing circles, and if you want to if you want to branch out, you're on your own. All right, so now I'm gonna make some cuts. Notice that I'm not actually gonna cut um, anything out. When I'm done with this, it'll still be a whole piece of paper. So that's important to keep in mind. I do paint, but I haven't painted in a long time. Those skills are very rusty. So we're just gonna make a bunch of cuts. And I'm, you know, just cutting right up to the circle. I guess there's no reason they all have to be the same. I always do it where they're all the same, but they could vary certainly. What kind of craft knife is this? This is a scalpel, like we use in the lab, but you could certainly use um, an Olfa knife. These are great. Easier to change the blade on these. Um, the bone folder, yes. I love this bone folder. I've had this bone folder for a really long time. Probably, it's probably a 30-year-old bone folder. Ridiculous. Okay. Cutting, cutting, cutting. More cutting, and I these do these cuts do have to be um, parallel. I don't, I don't think it would work another way. And notice that they're perpendicular to the fold of the card. Okay. One more, I'll squeeze one more in there. Okay, so see, I still have a full sheet of paper. Nothing is removed. Okay, what kind of crap knife? I answered that question. I think I got everything. All right, so this is the back of the card. I'm going to now score again. I'm just racking up the scores today. 
I'm going to score along this arc where uh, I want this paper to fold. Okay. Uh, what's that profession? Bone folder? Yeah. I think um, they're the same people that make cement shoes and the like. Take people down to the East River and they never come back. Okay, so I've scored just along that arc from the first cut to the last. And colloquial term for a chiropractor. That works. That works. Next time you go to the chiropractor, say, I'm here to see the bone folder. All right, now, so the other th the inside of the card is going to fold like a regular card. These are obviously going to fold again here, but the other way, right, they're going to pop out. So what you have to do now, your job now, is to teach each one of these where they're going to fold along that arc. So you have to just kind of go along there and pinch each one of them, um, kind of like a French teacher. When your students aren't behaving, you just pinch them. So just pinch along that arc. All right. Okay, so all those guys know where I want them to go. And I do the same thing over here. See, it's coming together. Look at that. And now, hopefully, you just close it. I like, it's kind of cool looking like that, isn't it? Where it's not really creased so hard. It's just kind of like a little AT&T symbol, maybe. Anyway, so now you close it. And hopefully, it's still lined up where you want it to go. Yeah, okay, that looks good. All right, and now you've got to convince all those little folds in there to go the opposite way they started, right? Remember, they were folding this way, now you're making them pop out the other way. You're right about the mass. Uh, I don't know how they mass market, do those mass market ones. I do not know. I really do not know how they do that. Okay, there it is. Now I'm going to go ahead and um, add a bit of paper to the back, so you have a, um, is that mouse been sitting there the whole time? God. Um, so you have something you can see through the, the cage, so to speak, right? So I'm just going to put some glue stick all over that. I don't really like glue stick. For me, it's just harder to control. I don't know why it just feels so unwieldy. Oh, I should have done it so much. Oh, okay, I just I just demonstrated you should not something you should not do. I just successfully demonstrated something that you should not do. See all that glue inside there on the blue? I should have only put the blue, the glue around that on the blue paper. So, I did that for your benefit. You're welcome. There's my little cage. All right. Um, and now you know. That's right. So um, that's kind of all I have. I didn't know how long that would take me. I, I didn't, it didn't occur to me it would only take half an hour. I'm sorry, I don't have more. Um, I can show you um, some other things I would like to do. If you're interested, uh, another day we could do another Twitch. Um, 
So this is how you make, these are just my mock-ups, so don't ignore the pencil marks and everything. So this is like a stair, stair step, if you wanted to make some kind of stair step pop up. Can you see how that is? It might be better this way. There you go. Stair steps. That's cool. I mean, if you think about the stories you're trying to tell in a pop-up, right? If you think of, um, yeah, the story you're trying to tell. So here's one. If you're having trouble sleeping, <laughs> wait, that's more of a goat than a sheep. <laughs> Make that sheep jump over the fence. And what else have I got over here? That might be all I have to hand. Oh, here's one. <laughs> okay, y'all gonna find out a lot about me on this one. Sorry, I apologize in advance. So this is fun. You um, I this I made this as a joke. The wheel of my heart. Can you see it? There. The wheel of my heart. And all it is is a little window here, and you can make a little thing that goes around to show all the things that, in this case, all the things I love. So there's a book. There's a, my earbuds. There's my, um, my Zoloft. <laughs> there's my cheese. I love cheese. There's my cow. I love cows. There's my sweet husband. Spaghetti is my favorite meal, and dogs, of course, and back to the books. So that's really fun. Um, we can, but I can do all those another time if you're interested. Um, I could do another another one of these. So there you go. Um, online material or where people can find you. Um, what should I do there? I could put my email address in. My my website is Celestine Studio dot com c e l e s t i n e um, but it doesn't really have a way on there that you can interact with me um, can i put my um, email address in this i probably shouldn't do that if it's public right i don't i don't know whether i should do that or not you can definitely get me through the library um, yeah there's celestine studio thank you um, so i don't know how to I'm, I'm not sure how much to disclose here i don't know um, how much information I should give out because I'm new to this. Anyway, uh, that's all I got. If uh, you guys want to ask any questions or I'll just sign off. Do, 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 do. If you're comfortable, it's public. I guess I'd rather not put my personal email out there to the world. So maybe people should just try to get me through the library. Is that the way to say it? They could go online and find me in the, on the uh, library's page. More relating to pop-up right which are good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you guys for watching. And, oh, the elephant dung paper. Emily actually ordered that for us. Once I had twisted her arm and talked her into that project, which actually, by the way, was a failure, I have to admit. This paper, it looks cool here, but it doesn't hold the folds as well as I might have liked. It's a little bit soft for this job. But she was game. She was a good sport and uh, let me try it at least. So Emily um, is the one who found this stuff online and ordered it for us. Elephant dung paper. Do y'all want me to talk about elephant dung paper? Rhino dung, sure. Actually, you know, there's a goat farm near me and I was going to go ask them if I could have a bucket of goat poo. Um, thank you for coming, MJW. Uh, and basically what you do, you know, if you think about it, I'm sure my boss is rolling his eyes right now. If you think about it, the poo of herbivores is pretty innocuous, right? It's not like dog poo, which is awful, right? But um, the poo of herbivores is basically just processed grass. You know, it's relatively, it's relatively uh, innocuous. So you just um, rinse out all the disgusting matter and what you're left with is some digested Paper pulp. Um, that's real. Um, yes. And then you just uh, make it into paper. And, and that's kind of a complicated, lengthy process, too, which um, uh, is more, it would be hard to do on Zoom, but it's fun. And, and actually, MJW, who is left, has made paper with me. Um, buffalo cakes are good fire fuel. There you go. See, that's what I mean. They're not the worst thing. They don't, I mean, they don't smell lovely, right? But they're not the worst. Anyway, so, so yeah, 
if, if you if you've ever heard of a Hollander beater, um, it's what they use to make commercial paper. It's like a giant, giant, giant blender that that churns up all the fibers of the plant, you know, the cotton or the wood or whatever. And um, and basically, an elephant is just a really big, breathing, living Hollander beater. Paper paper making Twitch stream. I don't know. I don't know if I could do that in Twitch. I could try. I don't know. I don't like how cake is at the end of that word. Yeah, yeah. Well, and don't they say, what is it? Cow, cow patties? Cow pies? That doesn't sound good either. The cake part is a lie. Yeah. Okay, we will definitely do more paper craft and making books. And I might do some uh, repair too, if people are interested in that. But I think that's all I got. Paste paper, yes. Definitely can do paste paper. That is super fun. Paste paper. Do I have a sample of paste paper? I don't think I have one handy. So this goat dung, were you going to make it make your own paper? Yeah, I have made my own paper uh, out of um, cotton and out of blue jeans and out of a plant called um, ab uh, abaca. Abaca. Um, and so I was going to use this goat dung and try to make paper with it. Now, the thing about the elephant paper and probably the goat paper, too, is that it's, it's mostly fiber. There's not, um, there's not much to make it smooth, right? I, I imagine something was probably added to this. Some other material was added to the elephant dung. So, um, like maybe cotton or something. But, yeah, I was going to try. I haven't worked up the nerve to go ask the people for a bucket of dung yet, though. So there you go. I guess I will sign off. If I don't see any more questions, I will say goodbye. Looks like we're done. Okay. Thank you very much. I will say goodbye and I will hope to see you again.